Hello guys! Wanted to give a quick shout out to the sponsor for today's video, BetterHelp! If there's something interfering with your happiness or preventing you from achieving your goals, BetterHelp will assess your personal needs and match you with a professional licensed therapist. This past year has affected all of us in so many different ways, so BetterHelp has a huge, broad range of expertise in their counselor network. You can start communicating within 48 hours and this service is available worldwide. You can send a message to your counselor at any time and you'll get a timely, thoughtful response. Or if you don't like text, you can schedule a video or phone call as well. Listen, if you're not vibing with your therapist, that is totally fine and it's normal. It's free to switch. Keep looking until you find that perfect match. It's more affordable than traditional offline counseling and financial aid is available to people that need it. BetterHelp wants you to start living a happier life today. So if you're interested in doing that, go visit betterhelp.com slash broski. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash broski to get 10% off your first month. All right, thank you again, BetterHelp. Let's get into the video. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm here with my mother. If you haven't seen our last video together, she is a ghost hunter as her side hustle profession. And I interviewed her about the basics of the paranormal that she deals with. In that last video, if you haven't seen it, go watch it. She talked a little bit about elementals and a lot of you were really intrigued by this whole realm. And while Misa, I call her Misa if you guys watch Game of Thrones. My name's Misa. Misa's specialty definitely is in the ghost and I would say definitely like spirits and orbs sector of the paranormal. But she has had dealings with elementals and she knows a little bit about it. And I want to throw a disclaimer out there because you bitches in the comments do not come for my mother because she's speaking on the very basics of what this is. Um, a lot of this overlaps with, would you say, a lot of witchcraft. It can, yes, absolutely. Well, a lot of witchcraft mm -hmm. when it comes to like fairies and fairy circles and how TikTok thinks they know everything about cottage core and witchcraft, it's just whatever. <laughs> Getting into that whole sector, that's not really what we're about because honestly, witchcraft kind of scares you, I would say. Um, not that it scares me. I mean, I've got friends that are witches, um, but I just don't practice the Wiccan yeah. lifestyle. So it doesn't scare me. It's just an area that I don't delve in. Yeah, I asked y'all on Instagram for some questions that you would like answered and she'll talk about what she's comfortable talking about and we want to kind of stay away from the evil stuff, you said. Yeah, we'll, we'll get into a little bit of, you know, the malevolence. So let's get started. But I'm serious. Don't bully my mother. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to know more about this, definitely Google it on your own. I know a lot of this is, it's findable on the internet, but some of it is from personal experience. So let's get into it. So to begin, what are elementals and what would you say is their purpose? You know, when I became a ghost investigator, obviously elemental is not really something that we focus on when we go into an investigation. It's a piece of the puzzle, of the big puzzle when we're investigating. So we always keep it in mind that it might be an elemental that we're dealing with, but we don't go out searching for them. So okay, what are the differences? Thing. When I start talking about fairies, because I know a lot of you want to know about fairies. When we say fairies, we actually mean all of the elements. Elementals, it's all encompassing when we say that and then we'll start getting into how they're behaving or what we're seeing in photos if things are being moved around in a house what's going on there but anyway the first one um, the earth elementals and those are things like gnomes dwarves our fairies satyrs pans they're the kind of more the evil ones elves pixies those kind of things and i know that there was a question about astrology and how they're related so if you're an earth sign which would be taurus Virgo, Capricorn, then you might be more likely in seeing or feeling, I should say, some of these things. So now, by me sitting here telling you about it does not make me believe in all of this stuff. I have an open mind though. You just have to open your mind up and it's whatever you might believe or maybe what you've experienced as well. So the next one is water elementals. And those are things like water nymphs, of course, mermaids, sirens, and ondines. That would do your water sign, be your water signs of Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces. So if you're a water lover, if you like to be around the ocean, the lakes, you might be watching out for these kinds of creatures or these kind of interactions. And then the next one is air elementals. And that would encompass our Geminis, our Libras, and our Aquarius. I'm a Gemini, so that I'm an air sign. And this is mostly what's called a sylph. And a sylph is a very ethereal creature that deals mostly with our atmospheres. So, and it's very closely related to breathing, breath. They've been known to 
be able to change the weather or watch over our atmosphere as well. Sylph actually means butterfly in Greek. So if you ever looked up into the clouds and you kind of might see some wispies that might look like angels or things flying, that very well could be sylph. So then the last one is our fire elementals and that would encompass Aries, Leo, and Sagittarius. The fire elementals are probably the least known elemental. They are called salamanders. That, that does not actually mean they are a lizard, although they can shape shift into lizard-like beings. They are the spirits of fire. Without them, supposedly, we couldn't light a match or have any kind of fire without so them. So the, the takeaway is kind of that all of these are physical manifestations of the Earth's energy. Yes, of the Earth's energy, but not just the Earth's energy, they also manifest off of human energy. For the most part, all of these elementals live outside, that is correct. They somehow are- Of, of the Earth. Of the Earth, yeah. You talked about protection. I've always heard of sirens and fairies mm -hmm. and all of them as being mischievous and almost playful teasing towards humans. Yeah, they actually can Are be. Are they more protective of the earth than of humans? We'll start talking about just fairies, okay? Because that encompasses so many things. Like I said, dwarves, gnomes, elves, pixies. Their number one goal is to protect our earth. And that is what they're here for. Their purpose is to protect our earth, make sure we have clean water, clean air, and we just get in their way most of the time. Yeah. I mean, or we're inviting them in somehow based on something that's outside of our home that might be, you know, an element, a tree or a water source outside. Maybe you have a river in your backyard kind of thing. They can be very protective over humans too, especially those that deal with the land, like farmers. But they can be good and bad and they can be very mischievous. So can you explain which ones are the most mischievous? The true fairies, okay, the flying fairies, I mean, and pixies would probably be the most mischievous because they're the ones that can easily go from one element to another, air to earth. They can follow humans and they re can really read human energy very well. They love music. So if you've got music playing in your house, even if you don't believe in any of this stuff, it might start making sense if you've experienced any of this stuff. They don't like salt. I'll tell you why in a minute. They don't like salt. They don't like to be thanked. Demons don't like salt either. Demons don't like salt either. Salt is, is very off-putting, but because it's from the earth. Aren't they of the earth? Too? They are of the earth, but fairies don't really watch over Fairies are, are freer. The gnomes are the ones that take care of the land itself. The fairies are kind of flitting around the trees and the bushes and the flowers. They don't really is it land salt much. Cleansing. Salt is cleansing, absolutely. It can also it is a protection because it gives off these certain ions and it's an energy that affects the way fairies fly, actually, and they don't like to get around it. It's almost like um, bugs break right down. I mean, they don't want to be around it, so it's the energy that the salt is, is giving off. Fairies, they also love sparkly things, and so we're gonna talk about the mischievous nature of fairies. If you've ever had anything move around in your house, you know, especially if you're missing some jewelry, as long as you don't think someone's stealing it from you, they like sparkly things. So they're gonna take them and move them around. It's interesting to think about how, like the origins of things like Harry Potter and Lord of the Rings and Peter Pan and you know, all even like dragons and getting into stuff like that. Mm -hmm. This folklore dates back centuries. Mm -hmm. Centuries and thousands and thousands of years. I mean, before Christ, before whatever. So, I always wonder, and even Greek mythology, a lot mm -hmm. of what you were saying earlier, I was like, and even like the words are, have a Greek Absolutely. origin. Absolutely, yeah. We're talking 14th century, 15th century, even, you know, even before then. You can find paintings, you can yeah. find writings. It always makes me think, what if this is something that used to exist and doesn't now? or does and there's a veil between worlds now it used to be open back then it always i always think that because these folklore continues through this day there has to be an element of truth absolutely truth. well yeah i mean and they're part of our, our you know our elements of, of our world right. i mean but you know you talk about that thin veil you know with, with, with all of my investigations that i've been on for spirits there is a even thinner veil between 
the fairy world, the other world, and us. That's why fairies can touch you. That's why if they are mean or they're mad at you about something or they can actually harm you. They can scratch you, bite you. What's your difference between that and a demon? Demons are usually from a human form and something in their spirit has gone bad. So that's totally different. But if you have a scratch on you, how can you know? Well, that's when we start questioning. But there are evil elementals out there as well that are shapeshifters. So you have to really be in the situation and then there's a whole other realm of there's aliens too. The evil side of it, you just have to kind of feel it out and see what kind of energy you're getting when you're in the moment. You have to know your surroundings and you have to see what kind of evidence you're getting to kind of determine. We Sometimes we don't know. Did we get a scratch from an, an evil spirit or did we get a scratch from some mischievous gnome? But very rarely are we thinking that. Like, did a fairy scratch me? I, we don't really think that way. Do you have stories? of personal stories and the ones you've heard. Well, All I'm thinking about right now is when you go unknown <laughs> with a pocket knife, just like running through your home. I'm just gonna tell two stories that, that I have. I just kind of knew they were elementals. How, I don't know, because I knew that they weren't spirits. There wasn't some kind of weird energy happening. So the first one was, I had this huge bush in my front yard and it was right by my front door and it blocked my view of the lake. It just was a nuisance. It had spider webs in it and wasps. And to me, it was just a nuisance, but it was a living thing, right? And so I'm sure that if you believe in all of this, these earthly elementals, that was probably a home. You know, when we talk about, oh, don't cut down trees, you know, the birds' homes. Well, I'm sure we are destroying elemental homes if yeah, you believe in creatures that. creatures you can't see also that live there. you can't see. I had my dad come over and cut down this gigantic bush. It was probably eight feet tall and probably five feet wide. For like the next week or so, I start seeing this entity at the, in the mornings, it was mostly in the mornings in the sunshine, when the sunshine would come in, in the corner of my eye, you know, your peripheral vision, this flash of black, like, run past me. You know, like, if you had an animal and, like, your cat ran by or something. I don't have any animals. And I could see, like, it was a little being, and you could see the limbs on this being in the different head, and it would run. Different from shadow people. Oh, different from shadow people. Because yeah. shadow people are, are real. Shadow people are real, and they can be any height as well, but usually they're very ominous, and they don't go fast. They're like oh, over there okay. watching you. They move like a human. Yes, they move like a human and they're slow. And I, kept, and I just was like, what is this? It's driving me crazy. And so I did a little more research into forest. Stick figures around my Right, door. they look like stick figures, so weird. And, and I did a little more research into forest fairies and like um, tree fairies and all of that. And sure enough, one of the things that I read about them was that they'll try to get your attention but they're very playful and they don't want you to really see them, but they do. Like they try to, you know, like I would turn, I'd be brushing my teeth, I'd say now about a turn and I can't see it anymore. So that happened for about a week or two and I decided I'd had enough. By then I knew. So I did, I saged my house and I just was like, you're not welcome here anymore. I opened my door, you know, and I put the salt on my, and I, they have not been back, whatever it was. It's kind of like a mischievous elf. Okay. Yeah. All right. And not, you know, like a Keebler elf. This thing didn't look like a <laughs> Keebler elf. Right. Right. Yes. No, cookie. No, it was not. The other thing I noticed was when I had the bushes cut in the back, they were super tall. I mean, it looked like a forest back there and they were cut off just, I mean, straight across. I didn't cut them down. They were just cut off for about another week. Like literally the next day I started seeing these bright flashes of light. And I thought, okay, look, I'm 52. I was like, maybe I'm having glaucoma or something. Maybe you have a little stroke that's coming on. <laughs> and I'd see these bright flashes of light in my peripheral vision. And I would see them when the sun was setting, not in the morning, at, and when the sun was setting. It was driving me nuts. And I looked it up and that was one of the indications of a sprite. Now a sprite is a young fairy and they're very playful and they want to get your attention and they use sunlight to get your attention. They use bright light to get your attention. And I had to do the same thing. They came in the back door. The other ones must have come in the front door or maybe a window or whatever. So I had to do the same thing. So nothing malicious, nothing malevolent. It just was, they were trying to get my attention. Did it feel like there was like an animal in your house or something was there? Like you weren't alone? No. So I guess it begs the question, do they want to help or harm humans? 
It's a good question. When people ask our elementals or our fairy, we'll go back to fairies because that includes so many things, are they good or bad? I would say they're neither. They're just kind of a neutral. They have their own purpose. Can they be good? Can they be bad? Yes, they absolutely can. How is it influenced? It's by us. It's what we're doing to their environment. Mm. How we get into their environment and their world and get in, in the way of their purpose. How do you attract or keep them away? And can you also talk about fairy circles? Because this is what I want to know. I want to talk about fairy circles. Yes. What people don't realize is when you're making a gnome garden in your yard or if you're making the cutesy little fairy gardens, you actually can attract them that way. Some people are going to be like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And there are a lot of YouTube videos on how to do that. You can invite them into your home. I mean, you can, but you have to believe in them first. I mean, if you don't believe in them, you're just like, y'all, come on in now. <laughs> That just isn't really going to do. This isn't a situation where they're your pets. No, we don't want a pet fairy. It's just <laughs> because let me tell you, we're going to get into it with the mushroom circles and the fairy circles. If you invite them in, it's a lot harder to get them out. Yeah. So okay. It's a fairy circle. So we're going to talk about fairy circles. Fairy circles have been around, I mean, mushroom circles, because there are, there's different kinds of mushrooms that actually make these, and some people say it's all scientific. It's a certain kind of mushroom yeah. species. Some of them are poisonous, some are not, some are colorful, some are not. They say that fairy circles are created, if you believe in them, by fairies dancing in a circle. And they dance in a circle so much that it makes the mushrooms grow along the path that they're actually dancing because that's one thing that fairies love is music and they love dancing and these fairy circles can actually grow bigger and bigger and bigger as big as like 600 meters Dang. and that's huge that's huge so it makes you wonder do we have fairy giants i mean you know what what's causing the how many fairies so are why would you say that now i'm gonna freak out what about fairy do you ever giants? think about there's so many trees that have never been seen or touched by humans as it should be but there are so many deep forests that we have no idea and that's where they say a lot of elementals live are in the deep forest because they don't want to be around humans they yeah. don't want to be around yeah. industrialization they don't want to be around pollution because that kills them that yeah. that weakens them there's been a lot of explanations for fairy rings some say it's a portal to another world it can take you to different times. It can take you into their world. They say that the little toadstools are where they sit when they're tired after dancing. They also say it's where the devil churns his milk. That's another story. <laughs> what the hell does that mean? These are all different interpretations of these mushroom rings. I want to acknowledge the scientific side of it. It is the way some of the spores in the mushrooms can grow. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. again, it's one of those marvels of nature, like a spider's web and how everything is perfectly symmetrical. Mm -hmm. How these are natural phenomena mm -hmm. that grow in a circle. So folklore aside, they are, when you come upon them or when you see pictures of them, it is like, whoa. But the one thing you don't want to do is if you see a fairy ring or a mushroom ring is do not step in the middle. <laughs> and this is whether you believe any of it or not. It's been said that when you step into their realm, because that is their realm, the folklore is that the fairies will make you dance until you go mad or till you're exhausted. But the other thing about stepping into this world, if you believe it, is that you go into this other world or this underworld and you lose all track of time. And time goes by fast, goes by really fast. If you want to escape, they say that you have to tell the fairies, I'm sorry, three times. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And they will release you from their ring, their fairy ring. I'm not saying that if you step into one, oh my gosh, you're trapped and you can't get out, you know, like a mime or something, but these are just folklore stories. Is there any evidence of it? I can't say. Are there any, as it stands, accurate representations of elementals in the media, in movies, TV shows, books, plays, whatever, and also, how, what do you think about Tinkerbell? Okay. Historically, going, like we said, going so far back, I've shown you pictures, paintings of aliens and ufos in no paintings. literally from like da vinci's paintings he used to paint like ufos yeah and so you can also in these paintings 
It's mm -hmm. thunder. Also, you know, the sylphs must be mad at us right now because we're talking about I'm gonna it. kill myself. <laughs> but in these paintings, you can also see fairies and gnomes and elves. If you look, I will tell you some good movies that I think are really good representations. One of the top ones that I remember in the 80s, and I know it was the 80s because that was my generation, was called Labyrinth. And it's got David Bowie in it. Legend is another one that's got Tom Cruise in it. Pan's Labyrinth. Willow is another really good one. And then, you know, we had some questions about Avatar. People really wanted to know, is Avatar reflective of, because that movie, they're so intertwined physically with nature. With nature, right. And I would say that the Avatar creatures, they are an alien species. I don't think they are elementals, but they live among the elementals. Do you think that in the deep forest it's similar to an avatar world? Absolutely I do. I think there's so much that we cannot see that's happening in the forest. And in the bottom of the ocean. In the, yes, yes, in the bottom of the ocean as well. Now let's talk about Tinkerbell. Walt Disney did not create fairies. And also, backstory, Peter Pan, the Genesis wasn't 1953 with that movie. It was right. actually, it was written in 1904. Mm -hmm. So again, way before modern cinema to right. romanticize it. This was a play that mm -hmm. was turned into a novel that was turned into a movie. Mm -hmm. And the concept of Tinkerbell has been ever present. There's old sketchings and drawings, you know, and it shows a creature that looks like more like a moth, but I mean, still yeah. a flying something. She was a fairy that supposedly mended like pots and pans and kettles and things like that. So she tinkered with tin because that back then or she was a tin smith a tinker and that's where they got the term tinkerbell of course then they added her voice that when she speaks it was that little bell, bell and, and that nobody could understand her except for the fairy world and of course peter since we're talking about nature and forests and fairy circles and all that how do you feel about shrooms why in nature do natural psychedelics exist oh and does that have anything to do with any of this? It's there very is. deeply tied to if you're of the earth, these things are natural. They are natural. I mean, all of it is natural. Now, do I think somebody was out there smoking shrooms and said, man, I see a fairy. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, have you ever heard that absinthe? They yeah. call it the green fairy. You know, you sit there and drink it and you'll start hallucinating that there's a green fairy on your shoulder and all of that. It's thunder again. But I do believe that these natural things were put on earth to help humans, to help pain management, anxiety. I mean, are we using them correctly? No. But I mean, they've got, they, they've got to serve a purpose. Okay, so Brittany had said that some of y'all were asking about evil. Were, were there evil elementals? And actually, yes, there are. I would say that most evil elementals are shapeshifters for sure. They can come across as anything. They can look nice, look sweet, and but they can be super evil. But there is one very famous one that I'd like for, for y'all to go read about because it is super evil. It was at a place in Ireland called Leap Castle, L-E-A-P, Leap Castle. This castle was built in the 14th century. Dang. And then in the late 20th century, a woman by the name of Mildred Darby bought the castle. They started seeing an entity there that just stunk like it was rotten. It had red glowing eyes. It shape-shifted. It had kind of a half human, half kind of pig face with sunken eyes. They called it It. Not to be confused with Stephen King's It. They had some run-ins with this thing and it was absolutely something that was in the environment around the castle that came into the castle. It was an evil elemental haunting. Go look up that story, it's super interesting. Well, thank you, Misa, for coming back on my channel. We could make 700 more of these. Misa's specialty is really aliens. Yes, um, She loves absolutely. aliens. She loves all the ancient alien shows. She went to Alien Con in Baltimore, Maryland. Absolutely, met Giorgio Sukolo. Don't roast us. <laughs> <laughs> Do your own research. But definitely, if you have thoughts or stories, I love to read y'all stories. Y'all had some weird ass stories on the ghost one. I was reading through and I was like, dang. I saw, I read some too. I was very yeah. impressed. And I'm glad that y'all are like open-minded about it and really wanting to share. Yeah. And I really appreciate, I just wanted to shout out to all of those that 
that went to my website and sent me all of those fabulous stories. I could not keep up. Y'all were sending me so many. So if I haven't responded, I'm sorry. I'm trying to get there. But some of y'all just have had some amazing experiences and I'm proud of you for keeping an open mind about it all because you are not crazy. There are too many people telling these stories for it not to be real. That's not global. Absolutely. Globally. Before yes. the internet too. Yes. Well, thanks guys. See you next week. Okay, bye. Bye. <laughs> Yeah, they're okay. <laughs>